Looking at a brachial plexus model, here we've got an anterior view of a left brachial plexus. We can see, or rather we can't see, uh, the anterior scalene muscle, which would have been sitting right here in front of these structures, so that's been removed. So we can see five nerve roots. So we've got C5, C6, C7, uh, C8 and T1. And we can see that 5 and 6 combine to form what will be a superior trunk. Uh, we can see the C7 just carries on and becomes the middle trunk. And C8 and T1 eventually combine to form an inferior trunk. And on this model, it's all pretty neat. You can just see five roots there, three trunks here. And then, of course, the three trunks divide into divisions. So we've got uh, three posterior divisions first. Let's find them first. So there's one here, one here, and here. But the way we can be sure that we've got the right ones is they all combine to form this posterior cord. So that one that's in between is actually posterior, and that's the posterior cord there. So any division going there is going to be a posterior division. Then this one will be the lateral cord, and we can see two anterior divisions going to joining to form that one, which means this must be the medial cord, and there's only one uh, anterior division that becomes the medial cord. So we've got five nerve roots, three trunks, six divisions, and then three cords here. This model is really quite neat and simple, and everything is very well organised on it. So it's a pretty good one to familiarise yourself with the, the shape of the plexus and the structure that it has. Okay, It's quite simple, everything's pretty easy to spot.